I'm moving now to the topic which was the most commonly raised issue in the questions from participants. It's on community rights. There's a broad perception that the community has lost its voice in decision-making around planning and the protection of heritage. Do you think the community should have a greater say on decisions around planning involving heritage places and representative buildings? What would you do to enable the community to have a greater say in policy and decision making? So first of all, do you think the community should have a greater say? And secondly, what would you do to enable that to happen? Yes, absolutely. I think the community needs to have more of a a voice and, you know, fundamental focus for us in the Greens is wanting to put people back into our planning system and ensure that we have a a planning system that serves the interests of the whole community, not just the big end of town. And that's the problem with the, the planning system we have in place at the moment, I think, is it serves the interests of the development sector but it doesn't serve the interests of residents and community. And there are so many examples of that. From our perspective, we want to reform the planning laws, go back to the drawing board. The new code is totally inadequate. We want to give the community more information about planning decisions and the things that impact on them and and their local neighbourhood, give the community the right to participate in decisions and also have an independent umpire that can look at things when things go wrong. And can I say we also have to bring local councils back into the planning process. Prior to being in state parliament, I spent some time on the Adelaide City Council and and it's appalling to see the way in which local councillors are being shut out of planning process as well. And Fundamentally, we need to ensure there's proper consideration of our environment. The loss of tree canopy is something that's devastating and having a terrible impact across our state. And if we're going to deal with our climate crisis, we need to ensure that our planning system has adequate regard for that. So there's a lot of work to do. Um, Certainly for me in the parliament, something I'm really keen to work on in the next parliament. And I think all of us need to make this a priority because the community deserves so much better. The system we have in place at the moment is really failing the community. Thanks, the Honourable Frank Pangello. Thank you. I agree with the Honourable Robert Sims. And um, this planning code really needs to be uh, thrown out and thought up again because it's creating enormous problems, not just with heritage listing and uh, incursions into particular areas and suburbs that have strong contributory uh, elements to them. It's also, there's a ripple effect with this planning code. And it's only because of discussions I've had in recent days with people from the building and construction industry, whereby the the code in itself, we're now seeing this enormous infill in the uh, metropolitan area because of restrictions on making land available outside this particular area. Uh, line that's been drawn around parts of the outside of the metropolitan area. So we're seeing an enormous amount of interest coming in in infill. We're seeing uh, many older homes that are being demolished on larger blocks, uh, older style homes, some of them that should remain there for the the historic value of them. And we're losing that uh, just to infill And I think we need to really have a strong look at what's going on with this planning code because it is going to have a ripple effect. And furthermore, particularly with the way that uh, the housing market has gone and is going right now, where we've got to the point where housing is becoming unaffordable and the profit takers are moving in, a lot of elements are being affected by this, including protecting our heritage in our suburbs. So this is, I think, why the, uh, the whole planning code needs to be totally reviewed and they need to start again. Thanks for that. The Honourable Sam Delac, what do you say about the community having the greatest say and what would you do to enable it? There is no doubt that the community has lost a a very big say under the new planning code. But it's not just the community that has lost its its say. It's actually people that use the code and and the new planning portal every day. It's, It's architects, it's people in the building industry, as Frank alluded to. It's people who work within council uh, in their planning departments. Everyone is frustrated uh, by the new code. It is not workable. 
it is now not even being used the way it was designed to be used anyway. And people are sort of going back to the old way to get things done and passing notes to each other. So it's completely unworkable. Uh, and I think anecdotally, all, all council um, staff are telling us that and, and people who have the interface with it. And as I said, with, uh, as Rob said, we need to go back to the drawing board. It's been an epic failure of the, the former the former Labor government and implemented under this current government. Thank you. Dr. Susan Close, uh, last <laughs> word to you. What would you say? You've specifically asked about third party rights, and I'll get to that. But because we're now moving very strongly into planning rather than heritage, I need to be clear to everyone tonight that our, her- that our planning policy isn't being announced yet. And so I'm unable to give much detail about what our planning election commitment will be. And I'm sorry about the annoying timing for that. But um, because we're a major party, unlike the others here, which is you know excellent for them, Um, But we have a very disciplined way in which we release our policies. And so I'm not able to talk about what we're doing on planning. But I completely understand uh, the questions and criticisms that have been raised. Mm -hmm. And I'm very sorry that I'm not able to do that. However, if I can just talk uh, specifically about the third party appeal rights and the voice of community. First thing I'd say is that we have steadily worked in the last few years in getting third party appeal rights into legislation. Most recently, I was involved in that with the Honourable Mark Parnell, the predecessor to the Honourable Robert Sims, in the Landscape SA Act, which was the update of the Natural Resources Management Act, to insert the right of standing for third parties who are concerned about the impact of something on the environment. So I come from absolutely wanting to hear the community being involved. The only word of caution, I hesitate to say this because, you know, I feel like I'm the one who's always bringing up the complexity and the subtlety, which sounds like I'm trying to get out of black and white politics. But in a way, I am trying to get out of black and white politics because we all actually have to live in a complex world. The only subtlety I'd like to raise in people's minds is making sure that when we talk about the importance of third parties being heard, that we find a way for that to occur in areas of low socioeconomic status, as well as those of very well-resourced, very well-educated people who are very well able to engage in that activity. So we, when we talk about it, we need to make sure that we're not just then throwing over these decisions to the local community dependent on their capability to stand up for their area. So I'm very concerned that we make sure that we're hearing the views of people who are more time poor or more resource poor or more education poor in in those uh, voices. I would also like to say briefly, because I don't know how much time we have, that Rob Sims raised the question of the natural environment being reflected better in the planning system. And what I am able to say is that I was appalled to discover, and I give full credit to Tom Morrison from the Hills in uh, clarifying this with the Conservation Council, that South Australia has the worst protections of trees in the nation and that we are committing to having best practice tree regulations. That should we be in government? Coming to that in the next question. Excellent. Then I'll be quiet now, but you've already heard a preview of what I want to say. Thank you. Okay. So, look, I picked up from almost the last of what you said that you want to, you do want to bring, while you're unable to say what the, what your party's policy is at this stage, you are able to say you are very interested in bringing social justice into community engagement. Social justice and community voice. I hate it when people are written off for being NIMBYs and there's this alternative um, description which is perfectly understandable place attachment. Pupa is the response to people who criticise NIMBY. We are allowed to care about our local environment. We just need to make sure that everyone has the equal voice and therefore the system has to work, not just rely on the resources of one individual community over another. Thank you. Some great observations there.